Hello all and welcome back. Seems some time since I've made a video so I thought I'd better get on with it. I'm going to actually make two videos but they're um, very different so um, one of them takes a little bit of time and I'll explain that in a bit and in a little while and it has stages to it. The other one I'm going to make is just a camping video. I'm going to go out to a hammock camp and uh, cook up a nice evening meal. This video is related it's still about food, but I'm going to cure and then smoke some bacon joints, which I'm really looking forward to. I did it many years ago, and uh, I'll take you through a homemade smoker that uh, I knocked up. Uh, but I think I haven't used it for about five years, and I certainly haven't used it since I started my YouTube channel. So I've got two joints of meat, which I'll show you. And I'll also show you what other ingredients uh, I have for the process. So to begin with, I've got two joints of pork, as I mentioned. This is called a thick end of belly, which will be for some streaky bacon. And this bit at the rear is pork loin or back bacon, as it's going to be. This is in its purest form at the moment, but because of the size and weight difference, this streak is going to take less time in the curing process than the loin. So I'm going to start them both together, but the um, streaky will obviously finish the curing first. So it's going to be a staged procedure. On the loin of pork, I'm going to cure it and then add black treacle or molasses um, for the curing process. And this really gives a lovely sweetness to the bacon. My neighbour Ian from Gridiron Meats also gave me the cure. However, it is readily available um, online. I got a packet online before I discovered uh, my, my neighbour's talents. But I've also got my vacuum packet at the ready and a couple of bags pre-sealed at one end. So the procedure is actually really simple. It's just a case of rubbing the cure into the joints of meat. However, the measurement of cure has to be absolutely precise. And the reason for that is that the cure contains nitrates. Um, I don't know if you've heard of saltpeter, but it's basically a small amount of that. Um, and the wrong measurement <laughs> well, can actually have lethal consequences. So we actually measure it down to the nearest gram. And the measurements we use are 30 grams of the cure mix for every kilogram of meat. So I've already measured these out and I know that for the small piece of the streaky bacon, as it's going to be, I need 49 grams of the cure mix. And for the loin, which is a bigger bit, I need 100 grams. So I'm going to measure those out now. It's actually such a simple process. I'm going to use um, some protective gloves because I don't want to get the uh, cure all over my hands and under my fingernails. It's just a case of sprinkling on the cure and rubbing it in. I've just discovered that a neighbour of mine runs a charcuterie business and it's called Gridiron Meats and there's the logo. I'll put the details down in the description and he's really kindly sold me these two joints of rare breed pork. Great, so I'm now going to vac pack that. And here's my much larger piece of uh, pork, loin, and that's got 100 grams of the cure. It's all coming back to me now. I just remember when I made it all those years ago. I thought I'm never going to buy supermarket 
bacon again. And here I am with a five year gap before doing it again. So, uh, lesson learnt, I will not make such a gap between curing my own bacon because it's simplicity in itself. There we go. Now this one is going to have the black treacle and molasses added, so uh, I'm going to move it back onto the plate, so I think that's going to be a fairly messy process. <laughs> Don't expect many camera angle changes <laughs> during this procedure. Gosh, it's uh, that is really sticky. I'm just going to have to try my best. Oh, that's better. Let me get it moving a little bit. I have to just try my best to get this everywhere in the bacon. As I say, don't ask for a camera angle change now because I'm not going to touch the thing. <laughs> there we are, that's working well now. Lovely. That is going to be delicious. Oh. go. Well, it's a very easy process, but a really messy one. I've got a ton of clearing up to do. Um, I ended up double uh, bagging these joints actually because I didn't get quite a good seal so uh, now I'm a bit more happy. So that's my streaky and this is the loin, the uh, back bacon. If you haven't got a backpacker it doesn't matter just use Ziploc bags. So what I'm going to do now is put these in the fridge and there's a little calculation you do in that it's one day curing per half inch of meat and obviously these are different uh, uh, measurements different sizes um, I reckon my thick piece actually is about three inches across at the widest point so that's going to be six days and then you add two days so that's actually eight days and during the process all I'm going to do is every two days because it's a backpack I'm just going to turn it over and then two days later turn it over again. I reckon that's only about an inch and a half thick so that's three days plus two so that's five days so this will be coming out three days before the the loin comes out. If you're using Ziploc bags what they say to do and this is what I did last time before I had a vacuum packer is when it comes to the turning of the meat after after two days then just the juices that are coming out of it, just massage them back into the meat, you know, spend a couple of minutes doing that and then put it in obviously the uh, the other way up and then do that again two days later, massage the juices that come out and so on. It'll be just as good as uh, backpacking. So I'm gonna put these two now in the fridge. I'm gonna put my man cave back together. You, you should see this mess and put the kitchen back together before I get into trouble and I'll catch up with you when these are done. Right, we're now another three days down the line and I've taken out the loin, washed off the rest of the cure and the black treacle and look at the colour it's taken from that treacle. Absolutely lovely. It's nice and firm. Now I've dried it and it just needs 
a couple of days airing and I'll do that in the fridge to dry out a little bit before the final stage of the process. So this next bit is entirely optional but I love the taste of smoked bacon so I'll have my home smoker here and I'll show you around it. It's just an old filing cabinet and I removed two of the drawers and got it replaced with this steel plate that I had cut to size fitted with a couple of these clasps. There you go neighbours, it's just the summer holidays and here we go. I've got my smoke generator in the bottom there and I'll show you a little bit about that after and then I've got various racks that I can put on. I've removed most of them because I'm just going to suspend the bacon from this top rack here. It's been well used as you can see but I've just put some seals around the steel door there just to keep as much smoke in as possible. And this is my smoke generator. Really simple device, it's fantastic. We just load it up with the wood chippings and put a little tea light candle in there, start the burn and then when you get a bit of a, a penny sized uh, scorch mark on the, on the surface of the chippings, you then know to blow the tea light out and it'll slowly make its way around this maze. And the way I've managed to get the uh, air seal mix on my um, filing cabinet is by pure fluke, but I can get about a 13 hour burn out of a little device like this, which is fantastic. So I'll load it up with the wood chippings now. And I'm gonna be using beech wood chippings today. If you buy one of these, they're only, I think I paid about 10, 15 pounds for this and it's, it's really good. There's a couple of things to be aware of though. One thing is not to overfill it. You've got to make sure that these top parts of the maze, these metal are actually showing all the way round. You can see I've covered it a little bit there, I've overfilled it, but that doesn't matter because I'm just gradually give it a bit of a shake and it'll bed down a bit. And the other important thing is not to pat it down too hard, else it can, it's such a slow burn that it can um, decide that it's far too difficult and uh, take the easy option and just go out. So, as I say, it's worth just taking a little bit of time at this stage to get this all neat and tidy and there you go so I've spent about another couple of minutes just getting a uniform sort of distribution of the wood I think they call this actually wood powder because it's thinner than just shavings um, all the way around no leaps over the uh, um, separator here and it all looks about the same uh, height pretty much all around I've uh, I haven't patted it down, as I said, because that can uh, put it out. But I think that's about ready to go. So I'll now get the bacon ready and uh, suspend it in the smoker. So here we go, very exciting. I'm gonna use some of these meat hooks. Um, I think it just keeps the shape of the meat uh, Nice, it's a bit uh, over the top. I might just put one in this bit of, uh, of the streaky. And I'll put two in this other uh, bigger piece. I don't think actually we need two bits. That'll do nicely. And just for good measure, I picked up this This is a piece of fantastic black pudding from my local butcher. And I'm just gonna put that on the top rack of the smoker. So I'm gonna have smoked black pudding with my bacon as well.
So I'm just going to wait now until I get a little penny size uh, shape on there and then I'll blow the candle out and leave it to do its thing. And there we have it, the burn's nicely underway and that's the point at which I can blow the candle out. Candle's removed now and you can see that's still smoking away nicely. We don't want to waste any of that. See you in about 12 hours. Rather than me opening the door every couple of hours and checking it's still burning, I've just got a little hole in the side here and uh, built a little sort of chimney vent and I'll just check that there's still smoke coming out of there every so often. This is about 12 hours later. I didn't want to be doing a long piece to camera uh, at about 10:15 uh, in the evening uh, with my neighbors uh, listening to a youtube commentary but yeah the burn's gone successfully and just look at that bacon and black pudding the black treacle or molasses has uh, given it um, that lovely dark color and also the smoke now has uh, giving it that sort of yellowy brown um, tinge as well. And this is the um, streaky here. It's going to be a different colour because it hasn't had the um, treatment with the uh, molasses, the black treacle, but it's also taken that slightly yellowy uh, brown colour from the uh, smoking process. So I'm really looking forward to uh, trying these and that's exactly what I'm going to do now. But what I'm going to do is chop off some of the back bacon but I'm going to test it against uh, some home bought stuff I've disguised obviously where I bought it from <laughs> and uh, we'll just see what um, the difference is uh, as we cook up a slice of this back bacon from a well-known supermarket chain and uh, some of the uh, stuff that I've just uh, prepared Now that is a proper piece of bacon. And that is the supermarket offering. I'm going to fry these two bits side by side and compare them. And from my experience of the supermarket bacon, usually you get quite a lot of water coming out of it and a lot of white film that uh, seems to form on top of the water as well that looks pretty unpleasant. Also, we'll compare this next to uh, the bacon that I've just made. And you see I'm putting no extra oil in at all. So first we'll put in the supermarket bacon, followed by the bacon that I've just made. Already, can you see that water and white stuff coming out of the supermarket stuff there and there? So, look at all this. I'll put that up to show you. That's what's come out of the supermarket bacon. And that's within about a minute of starting to cook. There you go. That's the homemade.
There you go, guess which one's which. <laughs> Well, here we go, the best bit. Those are, I think you can probably see quite easily, that lower one is the home cured, and that upper one there is the supermarket. Here we go. Well, I'd like to say there's no competition, but I haven't done it. I'm not going to do it down because I'd eat that. You know, if I was camping and I cook that up in the morning, I'd be more than happy. But when you get something like this... It's sweet, smoky, that, that black treacle really, really makes it. Folks, try this. It's really easy, really inexpensive. Um, if you want to get the right cuts then go to your butcher and ask for for streaky ask for a thick end of belly that's the term you use but if you tell them that you want to make some bacon you want streaky bacon they'll be more than helpful um, ask them to take the bone out the ribs but keep those make some spare ribs from them but also ask them to skin it and uh, give you the rind back as well because you can make some brilliant pork scratchings or crackling from that um, if you want to make the loin, um, this is this is the back bacon, then you ask for a loin and um, that, they'll give you that just as it is. So I'm going to cook up a bit more of this, make myself a sandwich. I'm going to cook some of that um, black pudding as well. I want to end this with giving a great big shout out for Ian at Gridiron Meats. There is the logo there's the information on his website and there's his Instagram bits. I'm going to put all the details below as well on uh, the description because it's really, really great stuff. Uh, he produces with an awful lot of care and an awful lot of thought. His website's brilliant and he'll post it to you and you won't regret it. So good on Ian from Good Iron Meats and this is delicious. Thank you. Mm-hmm.